play with me. There is nothing scarier in Long Beach than the RMS Queen Mary. It's a classic. Even the ship's World War II moniker of the Grey Ghost should be enough to scare off the easily frightened. The ship's otherworldly reputation has made it one of the country's top paranormal destinations for years. And in the past, we've detailed many of the sightings of apparitions aboard the liner. But with the ship's reported structural problems, coupled with COVID-19, the Queen Mary and its hotel were closed for three years for repairs and health reasons. It opened again in the summer, and for this year's Haunted Long Beach, we visited the ship to see if any new spectral beings were uncovered during the hiatus, and how well the old school established ghost weathered the three-year closure without the joy of having ship visitors to terrorize. A team of reporters, photographers, and videographers was led through the ship's most haunted parts by guide Tim Baker, who was eerily familiar with the ship's mystical past. Baker, in fact, has been personally pestered by ghosts aboard the ship. Recently, he told us a half dozen mediums witnessed the ghost of soldiers pulling Baker's hair while trailing behind him on a tour. Those have got to be the ghosts from the war era when the ship, then called the Great Ghost, was used as a transport vessel. Sneaking through gauntlets of enemy craft as it crisscrossed the Atlantic. Inevitably, over the years, the Queen Mary didn't have a 100% survival rate, and at least 49 documented deaths were reported on board. But that doesn't include every death. Some of the most haunting parts of the ship that we visited were the cargo holds at the bow where several decks in the hold held German prisoners of war, who were packed into the areas at the ship's front. There, they experienced the roughest ride possible. Several died, but their deaths went undocumented, and if any remained behind as ghosts, they haven't been seen. Most likely even in death, they were anxious to disembark and pursue the afterlife in more friendly conditions. As for new ghosts that have been reported since the ship's reopening, one was spotted in the kitchen behind the first-class dining room, and another was seen, however unclear, in the employee locker room, which was converted from an interior cabin. The ghosts of the Queen Mary range from mere wisps or a palpably felt presence to ones that appear fully formed as passengers or crew from the past still roaming the decks and cabins of the luxury liner. Neither COVID nor restoration work is likely to have scared off any of the ship's most dependable spectral apparitions, such as the ghost of a man named Walter Adamson, who died in 1948 in stateroom B340, where there have been reports of bedsheets thrown off sleeping passengers and later hotel guests. There have also been mysterious knocks on the door, lights turning off and on, and water inexplicably running in the bathroom of the stateroom or the watertight door hatch number 13, which closed on and crushed an 18-year-old crew member whose ghost is frequently spotted around the area, sometimes running, sometimes whistling, and who's been known to ask visitors if they've seen his wrench, or the woman in white, who's been known to dance alone in the ballroom. or the little girl with her doll, who's been seen near Boiler Room 4.
And of course, there's the pool, which Baker describes as the vortex for the ship's paranormal activists, which can be attributed, he says, to the confluence of energy between the pool's water and the room's quartz ceiling. Among the sightings in and around the first-class pool area are of a woman in a tennis skirt walking down the stairs and disappearing behind a pillar, and a woman in a wedding gown from the ship's golden era of the 30s or 40s, often seen in the company of a little boy in a suit. Even if you don't see any ghosts on the Queen Mary, it's still eerily reassuring to know that during the time of its closure, none of the spooks have abandoned ship. Jason Bowie's. <laughs> <laughs>